He is the pastor at the Remnant Place to Cater, founder of Sydney Bride Films, where he's a writer and director. He is also a high school teacher, and I know he has some golden nuggets for us today. So guys, stand up and let's give a huge round of applause and welcome to Duluth High School from my friend, Sydney Bryant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Woo! Well, listen, I'm, I'm excited to be here tonight. I, I always tell people when I come to these high schools and uh, they have the music pumped and I get this nice introduction. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I always feel like I'm getting ready to do a comedy show or something. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm happy to have the opportunity to be before you guys tonight. And I'm not going to be long. Um, I've got a clock. It's back there in the back. It's on the wall. It says 30 minutes. It's already counting down. Anyways, we're not going to be up here a long time. I know most of y'all probably go to church and you hear the preacher say I won't be before you long. Um, but I promise I won't be before you long. I got a clock. And they're going to sit me down as soon as they hit zero. So um, when they asked me to come tonight to Duluth High School um, on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon when most people were at Bible study, I had no idea what I was going to be talking about. Um, but I had a chance to come and uh, visit you guys at school about four or five years ago. Now, uh, some of you probably wasn't even here, probably hadn't even made it to this point yet. But anyways, um, I had a chance to visit Duluth High School about four or five years ago. And I've been back several times, and a couple of the CTAE and CTSO teachers have brought me back. And here I am tonight um, to just talk to you about life. About life. And so, you know, a lot of people don't understand that principle or that concept of life. Ooh, that's, that's bad. So a lot of people don't understand that concept of life. A lot of people think that with life, it just happens and you go on about it, and it is what it is, you know, YOLO, you only live one time, live your best life. You know, we've heard all of those cliches and all those different things, but, you know, I stopped by Duluth tonight to tell you that life isn't just you live one time. Uh, life isn't live your best life because you only live one time. Life is what you make of. And if I had to give us a quote-unquote topic tonight, I'm a preacher, as you probably have read in my little bio. I'm a guy that does topics because, you know, with a sermon, you got to have a message title. You don't have a message title, people don't know what you're talking about. So tonight, if I had to give you a title tonight, it would be, I can and I will. I can and I will. So when we put that into context, because I'm, I'm a contextual person. I know that probably ain't a word, but you got to understand what I'm saying tonight. When you put that into context, um, I'd like to say something Maya Angelou said, because I think it, it is best. She said, I could do anything and do it well. Any good thing, I can do it. That's why I am who I am. Yes, because God loves me, and I'm amazed at it. I can do anything and do it well. See, we have to stop uh, using phrases like I'm trying. I will get there. Well, you know it's just life. No, 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 no. And I know you guys are, are, are in high school. I'm, I'm trying to school you real good tonight to prepare you for what's really coming because you're going to leave this place. Some of you are going to leave this place in 90 days. Some of you are going to leave this place in, in two years. Some of you are going to leave this place in three years. But in any case, you're going to leave Duluth High School and you're going to enter into the real world. And in the real world, you're going to go, mm. I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I signed up for this. What did I sign up for? Why is this happening to me? Is it supposed to be this hard? I can't do it no more. And then you're going to make a stupid decision like, I'm just going to live my best life because you only live once. These are sayings many years ago came out uh, when MTV was hot. Everybody was watching MTV, and you guys probably are watching it now. I just realized I'm talking to high school people. So in any case, MTV used to be a thing for me and people in my generation back in the day. 
And there were a lot of different game shows and stuff. And I'll never forget game shows like uh, uh, The Bus of Love with Brett uh, or something like that, or For the Love of Ray J, um, Flavor Flav, stuff like that, all these different shows. And you would hear people on these shows say, I'm here because you only live wife one time. And if I'm going out, then I want to go out with a bang. Or I want to be with this person. I like this person. He's cute. I want him to be with me because I'm cute. And I think we're going to have some great kids. Long story short, every last one of those people who were on those shows made a decision that they only live life one time. They're going to live the best life. And guess what they did? They done something stupid. They got on national TV and made a fool out of them, the mama, the daddy, the grandma, the whole family. Why? Because you only live once. But see, I beg to differ when it comes down to making cliches. We should make sayings like, um, life didn't promise to be wonderful. Teddy Pendergrass. And it's amazing because Teddy Pendergrass, if you know anything about him, go look him up, go listen to his songs if you don't. But in any case, Teddy Pendergrass was in a wheelchair about, I'll say, 80% of his career. Because in 1982, he got in a car crash. And the car crash left him paralyzed from the shoulders down. They suspended this man's career. Notice I said suspended, didn't cancel it, they suspended it. His career was quote unquote su suspended in 1982, I think it was like March of 1982, because he was paralyzed from the shoulders down. Now, Teddy Pendergrass could have said, you know what? I ain't singing no more. You know what? I ain't performing no more. I don't want to do a concert no more. I got in a car accident. I could have died, but I didn't. So I made a decision. I'm going to live my best life because you only live life once. But instead, Teddy Pendergrass said, you do only live life once. And I'm going to live my best life by doing exactly what I want to do because I can do it and I will do it. I want to sing. I want to make music. I want to make people happy. I want to make people laugh. I want to make people smile. So guess what? I can sing and I will sing. I can perform and I will perform. I can have concerts and I will have concerts. Tonight, I beg you to do the same thing. No matter what you're dealing with, make a decision. Say, you know what? I can and I I will. I can and I will. Eleanor Roosevelt, our first lady, she said, life is what you make it. Always has been, always will be. Now, I can't say it no better than that. Life has always been what you make it. Life is what you make it. Always has been, always will be. You guys are in a prime position right now because every decision you make in your life at this moment in time is going to affect the rest of your life. The decisions you make today, whether it's you decide to cut class, not do the schoolwork, whether you decide that sex is more important than education and you end up with somebody pregnant, we're going to be real tonight, okay? Every decision you make right now in your life is going to affect the rest of your life. It will make you have to make decisions down the road to compensate for the stupidity that you may have did now. When I came here four years ago, I'd done a, a session right here in the same auditorium, and it was called Dig Deep. And at the time, I had this big old trash pile. I bought huge bags of trash, and I bought these uh, uh, big blow-up pools, and we had the pools set up up here on the stage, and we had a whole bunch of trash in all the pools, a bunch of gooey stuff, whipped cream and juice and all kind of stuff, all up in here. We had these little um, <clears throat> sweatsuits the kids put on, not the swimsuit like you get in the pool with, but the little, you know, little plastic suits that they put on. And we brought them up on the stage. Inside of each one of these pools was $100 in cash. And I had taken the, the $100 and rolled it up, and I had taped it to the bottom of each pool. I had put tape over it and taped it to the bottom of the pool. And then I put all these different places of tape all over the bottom of the pool floor. A whole bunch of different tape in different spaces. And I told each one of the kids that came up to volunteer once they got the little suit on, I said, your goal is to take the next one minute, the next 60 seconds, and dig through this and find the value in this pool. They was like, the value, what is it? I said, there's $100 in each one of these pools. If you find it, you can keep it. And so, quite naturally, they cued the music up, doom, doom, doom. Kids dove into the pools. They digging through all this stuff, and they dug, and they dug, and they sifted. And in 60 seconds, I seen so much stuff because they went bananas. They were just throwing stuff out of the pools, just throwing stuff, moving stuff around. Not a single one of them found the $100. Not a single one. So, 
we sat them down. I began to talk about digging deep. When it's time for you to get to the core of your life, why God created you, why do you exist, what's your purpose, what's your reason for living, you've got to dig so deep. You've got to dig so deep. You've got to go past all the stuff that you've ever dealt with, what mom said about you, what brother said about you, what sister said about you, what dad said about you. Mom wasn't there, dad wasn't there, grandma wasn't there, grandpa wasn't there. It doesn't matter. You have to dig past all of that. You have to dig so far deep within yourself to find your reason for living. It causes you to question everything you do. It makes you, sir, examining yourself like never before. You start looking at yourself and you go, you know, well, who are you? You got to dig deep through the mess, through the grind. Because deep down inside, there is value in each and every last one of you. And that was the concept of the pool. Although each one of these pools were filled with all kind of garbage and trash and, and, and gooey stuff, in that pool was $100. But were you, you know, persistent enough to dig through everything and look through everything to find that $100? Was it worth you digging through all this stuff to find the value in the pool? Is it worth you digging through all the mess that you've dealt with, the rejection from friends, the rejection from certain cliques and groups? Is it worth digging through all of that to find the value within yourself? You're absolutely right. Yes, it is. Because deep down inside of you is a purpose. You are here for a reason. You were not just created and sent to this earth with nothing just to be here, be null and void. To walk around throwing away precious time. I used to hear people say this in church and it didn't make sense to me until I got a little older. They used to say, don't give the world. Don't give the devil and don't give life your best. All of your best. And then when you broke down, busted, disgusted, and raggedy, decide you want to come to God. Not saying God can't use you then, but the purpose, the, the purpose of the statement is to say, why would you give everything you have to something that makes nothing for you? You invest all of your life into something that's never going to give you a return. And then when you finally realize that you have something better to invest in that will make you returns, you decide you want to come to God. It's the same thing with your life. Do not throw away precious years of your life. Do not invest precious time of your life into nothing that's going to make a return. Do not throw it away thinking that one day you'll have time to get it on track. And, and to do, you don't know when our expiration date is. And every last one of us got one. So why waste all those years of your life with the statement or the notion that you only live once and live your best life? When you can really live your best life. And you can really explore that you only live once. And because you only live once, I can and I will be successful. I can and I will be great. I can and I will complete what I set out to do. Because I can and I will enjoy the life that I have. And the life that I create for myself. My grandfather worked at a, a chicken plant called Golden Poultry for over 42 years. He worked the same job. Yeah, he had multiple promotions within the same in the company, but he worked for the same company for 42 years. And he used to tell me all the time, son, you got to work hard so you can play later. And I was like, Pop, man, you, you're going to work every day at that chicken plant every single day. And then you come home and you're tired, you want to watch the game, and that's it. What, you know, what, what, what else are you going to do? But what he taught me is he was consistent. He started out doing just like the normal people done. But by the time he retired, he had his own office. He was a supervisor. He had awards. He had trophies. He had received recognition gifts from the corporate office. Because he was consistent and he created greatness for himself. Whatever level of greatness he wanted, he created that and he explored that. Because when he retired, my grandfather traveled. He'd take my grandma on places like a cruise. He, they would go out of town and see his family or her family. My grandmother wanted a car, he bought it. She wanted an extension on the house, he paid for it. If she wanted it, she could get it. 
and he wanted, he could go buy it. Why? Because he worked so that he could live his best life. Sure, along the path as you're grinding, as you're working hard, as you're doing everything it takes to become the successful person that you want to become, you're going to have the opportunity to explore fun and activities and go be free and hang out with friends. Yes, you can do that, but do not lose sight of where you're going because you can and you will be successful. You can and you will live your best life doing it the right way. And in my closing here tonight, because my clock on the wall is starting to tip down, in my closing tonight, I just simply want to leave you with one thought. And it's a thought that I said before. I can do anything and do it well. Any good thing, I can do it. That's why I am who I am. Yes, because God loves me and I am amazed at it. That is all I want you to be thinking about as you get ready to go into these testings that are coming up in the next few weeks. As you prepare to uh, finalize and cement your time here at Duluth High School and becoming a senior and, and graduating and all that great stuff. As you're entering in this next phase of life, I want you to remember you are who you are because you can do anything. You can do it well. Any good thing you can do. That's why you are who you are. You can and you will be whatever it is you desire to be. Successful. And remember to be satisfied means to be fulfilled. To be content means to be in a state of happiness. So never get satisfied. Never find yourself satisfied. Find yourself content. Because when you are content, you are in a state of happiness. But you're always reaching and you're always striving to be better. Set goals, my friends. Short term and long term. Set hard goals so you're always reaching for something better. Set goals that will make you stretch. Set goals that will make you strive. Set goals that will make you lock yourself in your dorm room and don't go out to parties until you have completed it. Because you can and you will be successful. Hey guys, I'm Sydney Bryant. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be with you tonight. I really do appreciate the invitation and I cannot wait to come back again. And until next time, remember every day is a new day to get it right. For booking and more information, call 1-855-588-4977 or visit us online at www.compelinnerprovince.org.